So, okay, the ninth standard students, a very warm welcome to the online sessions of JC English High School. So, we are now in the social science second part, and we are right now going through the economics part, and the chapter is chapter four. Okay, the name of the chapter is uh, labor and employment. So, in this chapter, these are the things we already have done. That is the introduction part I have done and not I, we have done, then the meaning, then the features, then the importance, then the structure of labor force, then causes for the unemployment in India, then employment generation in the last two videos we have done how government is helping with implementing the programs to get the employment generation program in India and the last one was MGNREGA that is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act what it was what are the facilities and how to apply for this everything we have already studied in the last video so today our topic of this chapter is the gender dimension of labor okay here we will be discussing about the women workforce the following aspects of women employment may be observed. These are being observed. It's not that every time you can observe this thing, but sometimes you can observe, not sometimes, most of the time, these are means visualized. So, what is the first one? The marginalization of work. What is this marginalization of work? Women constitutes nearly. 31% of the labor force in the rural area and 20% in the urban areas. So what happens? Out of the total workers, okay, the total workers means the male and female both. They totally make the total workforce of a country. In India, the workforce of a country is also like that and the total is means the, what are the percentage of women and male. Of this, the thing is that out of 100% of women, okay, uh, women constitutes nearly 31% of labor force in the rural area and 20% in the urban areas, okay. If you take for rural areas 100% means male and female, of that 31% are female. Whereas only 20% is there in the urban areas. So urban areas, this one, your women constituting for the workforce is less comparing to rural areas. The female labor force participation is declining while that of male is increasing. <coughs> Excuse me. The female labor force participation means the females who are there in the workforce or who are going for the jobs or employment, okay, that is getting decreased when we are comparing with the workforce of males. Males are gradually increasing, females are decreasing. Female labor force in India declines from approximately a very vast gap it has happened, okay. In, 2000, in 1990, it was 40%. The 40% of the female were laborer or worker. Okay, 60% was the this one, male. So, female labor force in India declined from approximately 40% in the 1990. Okay, to 22.5% in 2011-12. In 2011-12, what we have found that from 90%, from 40% in 1990, it has declined to 22.5%. Uh, 22 means almost 17.5% it has decreased within this span of 20 or 21 years. So, it is getting decreasing. Women are mainly the workforce of the women is gradually decreasing till 11, 2010 11. We can see this is nothing but the report of the survey being done for the census. Okay. Next is the barrier to employment. What is this? 
barrier to employment women face multiple barriers barriers means obstacle what they get while they are going for the job or why they are not able to participate that much as the male participant in the work so women face multiple barriers relating to access to employment choice of work which work uh, the family will tell no you have to go for teaching only you can't go for the office job like that that is the choice of work working condition the place where they are working okay it is nearer or very far okay the place is hygienic or not this is the working place employment security is there all the pfs then other live uh, live without pay or live with pay all these facilities are there or not wage parity there are many places where men are getting more wages or more salary though the woman is doing the same work okay discrimination and balancing the competing burdens of work and family responsibility these girls or women they have to take care of the family also after that there are there are many situation where girls being they are educated also they don't get time or sufficient energy to go for the work next is the economic dependence of women okay what is this economic dependence of women okay, economic dependence of women is in 2004 and 5 in the year 2004 5 85% of the female population 85% of the female population was completely financially dependent and without any employment or income in 2004 5 85% of the female population was unemployed okay that is the economic dependence they depend on their family husband whatever you can say the last point is the casual employment what is this casual employment a large share of women workers are engaged in the primary sector what is this primary sector primary sector is nothing but the agricultural sector of our country a large share of women workers are engaged in the primary sector okay in the agricultural field though we think that the farmers 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 okay they are the main persons okay but as per the survey or report of our country it is found that the women's participation in agriculture is more than that of the females because agriculture is not only plowing the field or running the tractor okay sowing the seed harvesting the seed processing that uh, finished goods means the crops so that it can be sold out or it can be transported to the market for selling this in this total process more and more number of women are engaged so a large share of women workers are engaged in the primary sector okay 63 versus 44% of male okay so 63% are female when we comparing to in the primary sector it's not the total all the sector secondary tertiary not all okay only the primary sector 63% are there who are the female participant of workforce okay a low share of women are engaged in regular employment regular employment means secondary or okay, going to office and all like that okay so that is the 13% against 20% of males okay so males are 20% whereas the girls are uh, or women are 13% it means here it is low secondary sector you can say but in the primary sector it is too high 63% women and 44% are Uh, your male okay so in primary sector it is high but in secondary sector it is not that much low but there also 60% difference okay so 20% are male and 13% are women a significant share of urban women works in the service sector as domestic worker okay in the service sector that is the tertiary sector in that sector a significant share of women are being found higher social spending social spending means spending of a household higher social spending including investment in education today's world education is very expensive can lead to higher female labor force participation when there is 
the earning is less in the household what will happen they can't make their child to go for a private school or like that okay so that's why the point is coming here higher social spending including investment in education investment in education is more so there is a possibility or there is a demand to higher female labor force participation if uh, a father and mother both are working the more income flow will be there in the family okay more the income flow will be there they will be having the ability to send their child or they can access or uh, have the ability to achieve the good things for their children not for their children even for themselves also okay so higher social spending including investment in education can lead to higher female labor force participation representation of women in higher cadres of employment higher cadres of employment higher cadres means in higher post not only in the higher post but the level cadres should be also it's not that only a officer of a office okay this is something what i will tell you the higher cadres of employment means ias ips these officers they are very respectable post and we think that they are not only the male the women should also participate need to be improved as well as in legislative assembly councils and parliaments means in the political field also there should be more inflow of women workforce so with this we have ended your the chapter labor and employment we will be supplemented with the notes and also the question answers and see you in the next video thank you